Hi everybody, welcome to tonight's webinar with Dr. Robert Silverman coming live from New York. So tonight we are going to focus a lot on the violet laser. Um, we speak a lot about how the violet laser works in practice and it's great to see so many new faces attending tonight's webinar. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Vanessa and I look after the UK and Ireland. Um, for Agonia. And tonight we're joined by um, award-winning and Amazon best-selling author Dr. Robert Silverman. So I'm going to pass you over to Dr. Robert Silverman. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to use the chat bar um, and type them in and we will answer all questions at the end of this webinar. So over to you, Dr. Rob. Thanks so much, Vanessa. I really appreciate that. Always a pleasure to be here. Happy to see so many people on. Um, had a great time out in uh, Britain, so I look forward to when I can come back. But I want to go into. So I want. I want. I'm sorry. We're moving some things around next door, and they can hear you. Apologize for that. So um, I really wanted to get into detail about the violet laser. Um, I find the advent of the violet laser to be a game changer. So once again, I'm going to go through some slides. I'm really going to share some insights to the red laser and what it can do for you. But the key will be, and what we're going to go over today, is that violet laser application. That violet laser application, which again, I refer to as a game changer. So let's dig into the slides. I just want everybody, I will answer all your questions. So feel free. I'm not going to lecture the whole time. I'm going to turn the camera on. I'm going to do some demos. I'll even demo some things that you have. I already see a few questions popping up. You just once said, a healthy man wants a thousand things. A sick man only wants one. That sick man wants health. Now, I'd love to say that the sick man wanted the laser, but I can tell you this. I found that as an anchor and a backbone, that laser without question is something that a sick man can use to get healthy. So let's take a look. Here's the um, Econia base station. It's three lasers in one. For me, it is the laser healthcare system. It allows the diversity of all the handhelds that you need. In that, it gives you two, typically two accelerates and one EVRL. I can tell you that typically when I lecture, most practitioners want at least two EVRLs and or three. It's not that the accelerator is antiquated, but I think the violet light offers you so much versatility. It offers you the balance. It offers you some different properties, which I will delineate for you as we go through this particular webinar. So let's take a look. The visible lights, um, wavelengths and nanometers. So this is critical in that Number one, you look at the red light. The red light is a 635 nanometer light in that it is the therapeutic sweet spot. When you compare and contrast that with the 405 violet laser, which is a 405 nanometer, that is antimicrobial. So that 405 nanometer antimicrobial is critical because once again, it's killing bacteria, it's killing fungi, it's killing uh, bacteria, it's killing pathogen and not allowing that pathogen to present itself via macrophages as an antigen. When you get the two together, you get the combination of the red and the violet, you're getting all the properties together. So somebody asked me a question once and they said, if I add the violet, does it override the red? No, it doesn't override the red. It works within the red and the violet so you get both properties. Which one will hit the skin faster? Well, that's a great question in that the violet will hit the skin faster than the red. The red will come up and match it after about 30 seconds. So the violet, sympathetic. The red, parasympathetic. You will get the balancing of the autonomic nervous system at an approximately a 30 second application. So that's probably one of the juicier takeaways that you'll have today as far as application in a chiropractic slash manual therapist um, setting. Some of the biological effects of cold laser therapy and low level laser therapy. Number one, it's photon absorption. That is what the laser is based on. The absorption of photons, electromagnetic transfer of energy. 
It's the ability to put energy in the body and that body to process that. I like to refer to laser therapy as the photosynthesis of the body. Many of my patients really understand that because everybody, everybody's heard the expression of photosynthesis. Photon absorption, they're absorbed photons in the body by something called chromophores, which are in the cell membrane that allows for activation or appropriate efficient mitochondrial activation. So it allows for a high level of efficient ATP. When ATP is produced efficiently, there are not a lot of collateral damage or dirty gas, if you will, like free radicals and reactive oxygen species. So you're getting photon absorption, mitochondria activation, and increased ATP production, which will result in a stable, healthy cell. Low-level laser modulates demyelination. This study was done in mice, so laser-treated animals experienced one, an increase in motor performance, two, an attenuation of the demyelination, three, an increase in the number of ogliodendrocytes, four, modulates microglial and astrocytes activation by being able to modulate microglials. Microglials, the smallest type of glial cells. Glial means glue in Greek. Microglials are your macrophages of your central nervous system they are released at the time of injury and when they are activated inappropriately or microglial priming they eat a lot of central nervous system tissue therefore low level laser can represent a feasible therapy in these mice studies for demyelinating diseases photobiomodulation low level laser why do we call it low level laser because we're using a very low power, five milliwatts is the violet on the EBRL, 7.5 on the red on the EBRL, 17.25 in each individual diode in the FX635. So more so than that, you get, um, more so than that, you'll get a reduction of reactive oxygen species, nitric oxide in oxidative stress conditions, you get a decrease in um, NF, the in pathological situations. You'll get a decrease of pain related to inflammation by the reduction of prostaglandin E2. You also have pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-6. Interleukin-6, without question, is the dynamic tester for inflammation. And interleukin-1-beta also um, is interesting. That it can damage when released in high numbers your particular damage to your uh, disc degeneration and upregulated TNF alpha. Photobiomodulation also cleans inflammatory fragments from damaged tissues and enhances blood flow. So, what's the difference between the red and the violet laser? The red laser in the 635, and I'm going to show you that. And I'm going to show a combination of the red laser with the EVRL on lower back and things of that nature. So let's go through each individual thing. The red laser is a modulator. It allows for increase of energy flow and dissipates energy if it's too high. It promotes energy through the stimulation of the mitochondria. So what's your number one mitochondria organ? Your brain. Now this modulator, this increase in energy flow, and dissipation is very interesting. It means if the muscle is contracted, it will release. But if the muscle is too flaccid, it'll enable it to contract. So it's a great balancer or scale, if you will. It also has an anti-inflammatory effect. So if you want to manage and modulate inflammation, you really want to use the laser. It enhances ATP production, efficient ATP production and protein synthesis with the ability to reduce pain, while it also is able to create improvement in collagen formation in wound healing. The red laser has also been shown in multiple studies to reduce pain and muscle spasm while increasing strength and range of motion. The red laser also balances the parasympathetic nervous system and enhances microcirculation of both the blood and the limb. Lastly, the red laser is a cell-to-cell balancer or enables the cell to cell to be able to communicate. 
So we covered the red. So the EVRL has is an acronym for the Acconia Violet in Red Laser. So we have a red light. We also have what we call a violet light. The violet light is a four or five nanometer light. Why do we use the violet? Well, in my words, I believe in enhanced physiological outcomes because it has more energy per photon, not as power as in milliwatts. So what that says is we use five milliwatts for the violet, we use 7.5 for the red because the violet has it because it's lower on the laser scale it has more electromagnetic transfer of energy. It also works in a shorter period of time. It's more antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal. You know, a couple of studies really spoke to the idea of what happened inside the ecosystem, inside your gut in mammalian hosts. And the violet light seems to kill all these bad bugs, if you will. So I have a saying, don't drug the bugs, laser the ecosystem. And the violet light really has a tremendously effective or at least a greater response to immune function. So the violet 405 nanometer wavelength, the takeaways are it stimulates more the sympathetic nervous system, helps the body's defenses to eliminate bacteria, virus, and fungal infections, works in a shorter period of time, has a greater response to immune function. It's also referred to as opening the door and cloaking of a condition. So basically, and I can show you, um, certainly when I come out there and at some point on one of these webinars, it's great as a diagnostic tool because of its sympathetic overload to the systems of the body. And which I will demo for you, is you have to use the violet light on its own and the violet light in conjunction with the red because that is the choice wavelength for vagus nerve stimulation. So when you look at violet lights at 405, they actually enhance microbial activity for photo disinfection of biofilm. Biofilm is a, uh, I call it like the acorn, it wraps around the bacteria. So this study supported the efficacy of violet light and their antimicrobial activity against biofilms. They investigated the antibacterial activity of wavelengths ranging from 375 to 405 in that violet to blue range. They identified 405 as a specific wavelength with increased antibacterial activity. So 405 is the secret sauce. It is the most effective wavelength within that violet blue visible light threshold. So the violet light, again, I alluded to it before, many people ask, well, how does the violet light know? I mean, does it, if it kills bacteria, does it always kill bad bacteria? Because we know we have good bacteria in the gut. You need 80 to 85% of good bacteria to avoid the theme of dysbiosis. Well, here's one study to piggyback on the theme that it has the violet light because it's coming from the visible light, its own health compass, a bacterial inhibitor does not have any significant effect on viable function and a proliferation of a million cells pertaining to the good bacteria. So when you pulse it in all our cornea lasers in the musculoskeletal genre or pulse, continuous is more for the aesthetic region, pulsed four or five nanometer was shown to inactivate two strains of the human coronavirus. 405 is also shown to increase the level of nitric oxide and has a positive effect on viruses. So essentially, this 405 can be used as a photodynamic therapy for, once again, bacteria, viruses, parasitic organisms. And it allows for an increased microcirculation and it stimulates a portion or a complex one of the mitochondrial respiratory chain. Laser. Healing, laser, mitochondria, laser, ATP, laser, electromagnetic transfer of energy, laser, no heat, photochemical, not photothermal. So let's get to the basic anatomy and the functions of the vagus nerve. Once again, I just want to reiterate that I'm going to save a good solid 20 minutes for all your question and answers and some 
um, demonstrations at your requests. But first, let's look at the vagus nerve and the basic anatomy and function of the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve comes from the brainstem and the medulla oblongata going out the jugular foramen down through to the transverse colon. It is bi-directional, so it's 80 to 90 percent afferent. Something very interesting in why it's afferent and 10 to 20 percent efferent. Now it's afferent because when the vagus nerve attaches to the transverse colon, it attaches to something called a neuropod. And that neur neuropod is interesting in that it senses what's going on in the intestinal milieu. And it's able to communicate with the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve at that point from the transverse colon can be efferent and then go to the brain. So in essence, the vagus nerve is the key component to the bi-directionality of the gut to brain and the brain to the gut, in addition to its sensing going on in the microbiota, step one, through the gut to the vagus nerve there, step two, up through the brain. So one, two, three, I call it like a three-way calling. So the vagus nerve is the key component to the discussion, the communication of the microbiome through the gut into the brain. Again, the vagus nerve is 80 to 90% afferent, where those vagus nerve fibers will speak to the idea of satiety, um, energy metabolism, and inflammation, whereas the efferent going down will communicate with the secretion of the gastric acid and digestive enzymes. And once again, remember, the anatomy is going to be critical in that when that anatomy is critical, that's how we're going to be able to get granular and I was able to break up, make up a specific protocol to stimulate the vagus nerve. So this slide really highlights the neuropod. Once again, the neuropod provides a foundation for the gut to transduce sensory signals from the intestinal milieu to the brain through fast neural transmission onto neurons, including those of cranial nerve number 10, the vagus nerve. So how does vagus nerve do when stimulated in reference to musculoskeletal diseases? The findings are as follows. It had a positive outcome on rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmunity, obviously. Vagus nerve stimulation was shown to dampen the inflammatory response of circulatory peripheral cells. One of its main objectives is to quell the peripheral inflammation going on in the body. It also is shown to limit fatigue, and also positively affect people who have systemic lupus. It decreases the pain in fibromyalgia and also has the capacity to decrease the pain in erosive and osteoarthritis. Vagus nerve, we're reviewing it as a therapeutic intervention. Primary studies with the vagus nerve were as follows. Number one, positive outcomes with stroke, post-stroke, autoimmune disease, heart and lung failure, obesity, pain management, and there's an overwhelming evidence that the vagus nerve stimulation is a critical component of immune response. So vagus nerve regulates phagocytic and secretory activity of resident macrophages in the liver. So the liver is bi-directional with the gut. 75% of the toxins that get through the gut get to the liver via the bloodstream. 25% of the toxins between the liver and the gut communicate via the portal vein. So doing a gut to liver protocol and or including the vagus nerve is really gonna allow those toxins to function and be uh, transported out of the body more efficiently. Piggybacking on the idea of vagus nerve and GI inflammation, so there's a dual anti-inflammatory role in the vagus nerve. It's observed either with its vagal afferent by targeting what we call the HPA axis and also targeting an anti-inflammatory pathway. The vagus nerve to me is a virtuoso of sorts in that it has a myriad of responsibilities and functionings to generate health promotion in most humans that I've seen in my office and those at seminars and through other colleagues' uh, empirical research. Continuing with the theme of the vagus nerve stimulation and GI inflammation, 
the sympathetic nervous system and the vagus nerve act in synergy. They do so through the splenic nerve, which actually inhibits the release of tumor necrosis factor. Tumor necrosis factor, as we all know, is an inflammatory pathway and that release of tumor necrosis factor comes by the way of the macrophages of peripheral tissues and or the spleen. Because of its anti-inflammatory effect, the vagus nerve is a therapeutic target in the treatment of chronic inflammatory disorders where TNF-alpha is a key component. When you look at the vagus nerve, it's also a great modulator of the gut to brain axis, which I like to refer to as the superhighway to health in that findings in this study show that evidence that the vagus nerve stimulation is a promising add-on treatment for as follows. Treatment refractory depression, PTSD, irritable bowel disease, and irritable bowel syndrome. So please, as a takeaway, treatments that target vagus nerve increase vagal turn and inhibit cytokine production. As a matter of fact, the data indicates that cytokines decrease because of vagus nerve stimulation and improving the tone by 30%. And that can be the whole the difference between a cytokine storm and a low-level infection and or a low-level infection and inflammation and not any excessive kind of inflammation. Inflammation is very personal to me because I believe it's one of my credos to manage and modulate inflammation. And vagus nerve and a corneal laser helped me in that pursuit. Stimulation of vagus nerve is also shown to improve intestinal blood flow. So as you can see its variability, its flexibility. Vagus nerve stimulation actually evoked as a clinical nugget action potentials in the abdominal vagus nerve and caused a twofold increase in intestinal blood flow. So obviously increased blood flow, increased healing, et cetera, et cetera. So why do I use the vagus nerve stimulation via two lights, red and violet in portions of the body? Well, let's break it down. Let's get, let me delineate this a little. The conclusions show that using low level laser with the violet alone was effective in the treatment of epilepsy. However, when you combine them, Vagus nerve is useful in many different conditions where it was necessary to induce the incremental increments of brain activity in multiple conditions. Those conditions were depression, neuro rehabilitation, coma, autism, dementia, and disorders of consciousness. Long COVID, and I'm very happy to share my long COVID protocol. I've shared it with. Um, uh, Vanessa before. I'm going to go over a couple of different COVID-19 protocols as a demo. So long COVID symptoms are actually linked to the effects on the vagus nerve. Most long COVID subjects with vagus nerve dysfunction symptoms had a range of structure and or functional alterations in the vagus nerve, including from long COVID, nerve thickening, trouble swallowing, that's a critical um, property of vagus nerve to be able to swallow, and symptoms of impaired breathing, and that, as we know, the vagus nerve works in some form of synergy with the phrenic nerve for breathing. So the conclusion was very simply, in the, the authors found that their study so far, to the point that the vagus nerve dysfunction was a central pathological feature of long COVID-19. Piggybacking in that previous theory, 66% of them, of patients in this study, had one symptom that suggested vagus nerve dysfunction. Most frequent symptoms related to vagus nerve were diarrhea, 73%, high heart rate, 59%, dizziness, swallowing problems, again, voice problems, and low breath pressure. Please make note, another clinical gem, the average length of symptoms long COVID when the vagus nerve was involved was 14 months. Clearly, it's not just the flu. Clearly, it's not just a cold. Clearly, when you had long COVID and there was involvement in the vagus nerve, it was for a long period of time and it's a health changing moment. So let me test the theory. I'm a big proponent of using the FX 635 and the violet light to treat lower back pain. Why am I gonna do the combination? Well, we know what the red light does and it has an FDA clearance for lower back. Arconia has 20 
out of 23 of the FDA clearances in America. FDA clearance is a big deal. There's really the only determinant that something is quite effective where we are here in America. It's something that requires double blind tests, requires people to put money up to do it, and requires a lengthy duration of time having been a clinical investigator on one and involved in another one as we currently speak. Bacteria is a commonality in that it gets expressed in about 50% of people who have a spinal disc injury and or surgery. So clearly that bacteria would suggest inflammatory effects or an additional inflammatory effects on the intervertebral disc through what we call toll-like receptor signaling. Toll-like receptors are receptors that are on the gut that stimulate something called NLRP3 inflammasome, which ultimately stimulates NF-kappa B, which stimulates cytokines and specific kind of interleukins, essentially to allow the toll-like receptor to be activated is stimulating your inflammatory cascade. Now, as an FYI, there are a few things that blunt the signal of toll-like receptor, such as specific probiotics, because you're blunting what we call LPS, omega-3 fatty acids, ketone bodies, and low-level laser therapy. So here's one more key takeaway. This was a study that was done on low-level laser, its ability to modulate inflammatory mediators secreted by the human annulus fibrosis. We all know the annulus is the outer third of the disc anatomy, and um, this is during intervertebral disc degeneration. The inflammatory microenvironment in annulus fibrosis cells was suppressed by low-level laser interleukin-6 and interleukin-8. Interesting, the results indicate, please make note, another clinical gem, that low-level laser is a potential method of IBD treatment. It is synergistic with all other treatments, whether it be your Enzy protocol, your decompression as such, but 405 nanometers most positively affected interleukin-6. So if you have a 635 and you've got the EDRL and you use them together, you're going to exponentially increase your outcomes on lower back treatments. So photobiomimics, I talked about that when I came out to the UK. Photobiomimics referred to the idea of photons having a positive effect on the ecosystem in the microbiome. So that took us to about halfway through. There's a demo time. So in that demo time, I have my little memes. Let me go over a couple of different things. I am now going to turn on my camera. Um, there I am. Hey guys. So I'm going to actually shut the camera down because I won't be, well, it's fine. It's as simple as one, two, three. Steph's going to sit down. You know what? We'll sit you up here. It'll be a little easier for them to see everything. Let me get the FX out of the way. So in Simon Ramshaw's honor, we like to say it's as simple as Simon says one, two, three. Number one, point and shoot. Number two, passively move the patient. Number three, have the patient move themselves actively. That said, everybody, whether you're an experienced laser owner, thinking about a laser, or just have it in your hand for the first time, remember, point and shoot, which you can also set and forget, passive and active. So I've got the um, laser right here. I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to laser her in her shoulder area because we're talking about, let's just say, a rotator cuff area and rotator cuff injury. So we do it about a minute. Then I'm going to passively lift her arm because she told me that flexion was a problem, shoulder abduction was a problem. Meanwhile, kind of nice to do this. Roll those eyes. I love it. And now I have a razor arm. Now we're doing the active portion. And now I have her do the shoulder abduction portion. Now I'll raise your arm again, we'll put you here. I'm gonna add a little resistance, that push up, a little resistance to it. So that's the fourth piece, a little resistance. I can wrap a band around it if I wanted. She can have a little resistance on the way up. So it's simple as one, two, three. 
Add the fourth with resistance. And now's the fifth, if you could stand up. We'll go sideways. I'm gonna laser her cerebellum. I'll make this the easiest because the bulk of the neurons in the brain are in the cerebellum, 15 to 90%, and I'll have her walk in place. And I'm going to laser her spinal cord in her brain, five seconds theoretically in the spinal cord. She's doing a cross crawl, cross crawl, you can't see it all. In five seconds on the brain, five and five eyes open. She's now going to close her eyes. And we call this local motor lock it. So it's as simple as one, two, three, four, add resistance, lock it in. The lock in is a critical element. And the reason that the lock in is critical is how else do you guarantee or press save? Now, she could also lift one leg up. You won't be able to see her, but her leg's up in the air. And I'll laser her again, cerebellum. She could stand on an unstable surface, whether it be a rocker or a wobble board. So just have a seat for a quick second. Let me come back in here, shut my camera off for a moment, get to my slide deck. Again, the bonus is laser the cerebellum for brain upregulation. We call that laser motor locking or any kind of proprioception. So I don't know if you noticed, but the key, and please make note, the laser motor locking resets the neuromusculoskeletal system and what I like to refer to as 3D motion. The frequencies that you're gonna use are 493360. Vanessa has a sheet of paper with the most used frequencies and our three phases of care, which is critical in the musculoskeletal life. We all know it's facilitated bodies, uh, global integration. Again, reiterating what I did before, five seconds, eyes open, five seconds, eyes closed, cross crawl, right arm, left leg, and the reverse. I aim at the posterior midline of the spine. I repeat pointing at the brain. Again, eyes open, eyes closed. Here is the key takeaway. If I'm going over the spinal cord, the violet light, 405 nanometer, goes directly over the cord. The red light, again, I don't know if you noticed, 635 went over the adjacent nerve roots. Both lights can hit the cerebellum. I have no issue whatsoever using the violet light on the brain. So vagus nerve demo. One quick thing about the vagus nerve. When I run over the vagus nerve over the thoracic, we typically use the violet. When I do it in all the other areas, I use red and violet. When I'm using the violet light, it's on the acne setting. It's literally the only time that I use the acne setting on a nerve. When I use the red and violet, the vagus nerve is the perfect 10. It's 10, 10, 10. Well, let me turn that back on. Hey, everybody. Back at. So here we go. Have a seat. So I'll go to the right side. We're going to do vagus nerve stimulation. Let me just move that a little to make it a little bit. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn the light on and I'm going to go through the medulla oblongata down through the transverse colon. Normally I'm going to use the violet, but I don't want to keep switching the lights for the display. So we'll go up. Please feel free to ask any questions. I should be done at the 15 after the hour mark, and that will give us 15 minutes for questions and any case studies that you want me to perform on Stephanie. So I'm sweeping the right side, right below uh, the medulla oblongata and the jugular foramen, down through the transverse colon. Now, they should call it vagus nerves, because that's obviously one on the right, and there's one on the left. So I just did the left in the interest of time. I sweep it three to five times. I then take the red and the violet, put them on together, and go into jugular foramen for about 30 to 60 seconds, both sides. And then go in the ear to get the auricular portion of the vagus nerve. Once again, the auricular portion, both sides. Then I'm gonna go down, and she'll have her stand up. I think you'll see it a little bit better. Let me take a look at that there, okay. So I'm going to go in a lower quadrant to get the migrating motor complex, which goes from the stomach down through the small intestine into the large intestine. It's peristaltic like wave-like contractions that move the food bolus through the stomach, through the small, to the large intestine. Also, I'm trying to positively affect the iliopathic.
cecal valve, which is a flap between the small and the large intestine. I'll do that, and for I'll do that for about a minute, and then I'll sweep the full gut for about another minute. So I see. So just to recap, medulla oblongata down through the transverse colon, violet light both sides. Violet red, jugular foramen both sides. Auricular both sides. Migrating motor complex, ileocecal valve, sweep the gut. So that's vagus nerve. Remember. Remember 10, 10, 10 with violet and red. So low back option FX 635. I'll go through the old FX. I'm gonna turn the light on again. I light, I'm gonna turn the camera on. What I love about the FX is to stand alone or synergistic with any other treatment modality. The when it's a standalone, which I will demo, it's set it and forget it. You also can do the lower back with the FX in myofascial release. You can do electric stim with it. You can have exercise rehab. She can do um, uh, extension. She can do McKenzie extension, flexion, distraction. We just were talking to a few acupuncturists yesterday and today where they can put the needles in or dry needling if you're a chiropractor and can do the acupuncture with the laser, extraordinarily powerful and potent compression, you can kinesio tape. I can even adjust Stephanie if you need to see that. Instrument assisted soft tissue mobilizations and any other kind of modalities function really well. So let me get the camera back on for that. Okay, again, Steph, if you don't mind going face down for a moment. Let me detail a little the FX635. What I like about the FX635 is, again, it's a set it and forget it type thing. People see it, look how beautiful it is. Let me do my banner light. Let me do my banner light. And take a look how beautiful it is. How it's different than EVRL in that this has one, two, three diodes, all red, 17.25, 17.25, 17.25. Just let me get, whereas the EVRL has one diode and one diode. So they're a little different. And I'm just gonna simply put the EVRL in my pocket to hold it for later. So 17.5, 17.5. This laser initially got an FDA clearance for panopositis. It also got one for lower back pain. It now has one, the 20th that Arconia got was for no susceptive musculoskeletal, full body pain. So any joint, people come in and go, hey, Dr. Rob, can I use your laser for your shoulder? Yes, your elbow, yes, your ankle, yes, your lower back, yes. Your uh, concussion, yes, your toe joint, yes. The answer is yes, yes, yes. So it's versatile. What I like about it also is that you can lean it up and the newer models, also have an arm that let it go straight up so I can stand up. So the FX635 enables you to work with patients standing, prone, supine, sitting, and on the floor because I can drop it. If you're in a rehab situation, you can't even see it anymore. Stephanie could be, she doesn't have to now, doing a plank on the ground, doing a bird dog, doing a side plank, doing a dead bug, whatever she needs. So that said, let me put the laser on her lower back. And like I said, set it and forget it. So I'm gonna leave it right there for a moment and I'm gonna to talk to all of you as if she was really my patient getting treated right now. Again, I could do myofascial release on her, I'm working on her multifidi right now. I could work in her glutes. I could work on her thoracic spine. I could put e stem on her. Again, the 635 is synergistic with both any kind of chiropractic treatment or manual therapy. Acupuncture and dry needles, pop the needle right in. She's getting lasered. Decompression, I could stand there. 
and I could pump the decompression. She could have mechanical decompression or mechanical traction. I could take my kinesio tape out. I could taper her simultaneously. I can adjust her. I'll show you um, when I go back over there. I'll put her on her side. I'll show you how to adjust her. At the same time, I can do instrument assisted, soft tissue mobilization, grasp and factor and the like, shockwave, any kind of modality that you like. And the Pierre resistance, if you will. I can add the violet light application to the lower back to get the synergy between the red lights and the needed extra violet light to get to the bacteria that's going on. Possibly she has a disc herniation. So real quick, Steph, can you turn on your side? Would actually be better. That was smart. Well, smart come towards me. So I'm going to turn my back to the camera and I simply can come in here, lower it down, and I can adjust it. You can go back face down for a moment. Thank you. Better yet, go face up. Sorry about that. Sorry for being confusing. What else is new? So you can see also with lower back, let me drop it down. You saw that she was prone. She's now supine. Now I typically treat people in a prone in a supine position. And the supine is getting the lumbosacral plexus, and it's also getting her psoas muscle. That said, I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to pop off the camera for a split second. Hopefully, you have some questions on all that. And I got some questions. Give me a half a sec. I got two more protocols. But go ahead. I'll, I'll answer the questions. I'll okay. turn on the camera. How often? How often do you carry out the sessions for vagus nerve stimulation? If I can, if I have the time, I would try and do it every time I see them. However, that may not be realistic. I think the question bodes the next question in that, how long does it take to stimulate and how do I test it? Well, we're currently considering a study. I shouldn't say consider. We would probably do it in my office on HRV heart rate variability, because you want that heart rate variability, that implies health. So that's how we knew that the violet and the red and the violet worked. Um, you'll see a change in vagus nerve stimulation almost immediately. Okay, great. And you know how, you know, at the start we talked about the violet light being antimicrobial. Uh, so does the violet light eliminate all microorganisms, including the beneficial ones? Yeah, I, I tried to address that at the beginning in that the studies have shown that it seems to get all the bad bugs. And I do a lot of laboratory testing here. And in that, it's shown to get all the bad bugs. So again, the study was talking about mammalian cells and having a, um, a positive effect on mammalian cells because it seems to, because it's a, bit, a mimicking of visible light, it only kills the bad stuff. Okay, great. And you, you have already covered this, but I will, I will ask you anyways. Is there any benefit to use multiple lasers at the same time? You know, let's say somebody had an accelerate and then they were thinking to get an EVRL. Would there be any benefit for the, having the accelerate or not? Absolutely. There are some advanced techniques that I use where I use two lasers at the same time. You can also consider um, using the accelerate just to do the proprioception. You can also, you know, get a stand and you can set it and forget it and walk around with the other laser. So, for instance, you could upregulate the brain and or the gut with the accelerate, the red light, and do vagus nerve and some other things with the, the other handheld of the EVRL. I think people want just to get one, and I think sometimes two is much more effective. But I always say you really want one plus one. If you can get the EVRL plus the FX, you're going to have a full laser component, and you're going to revolutionize your practice, and you're going to be a little early in the UK since laser is newer than it is here in America. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, since you've introduced the lasers into your practice, obviously you, we've, you've had them for, for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Has this allowed you to, let's say, see more patients on a daily basis and grow your practice essentially by using the lasers? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to piggyback again on what you said. So number one, you see this guy right here, he's my associate. I'm sitting here and Vanessa and I are chit-chatting. I'm drinking my water and I've got my great organic coffee over there. So it's a great associate in that I press the button and I leave it alone. It doesn't ask me for a day off. It does all the work. Um, I press the button and I leave it alone. And it doesn't ask for a day off. I know I'm being a little sarcastic with that. That said, the laser has revolutionized my practice because one, it saved me. It saved me physically. It saves me time and it adds a treatment modality that I can't mimic in that photon expression without the use of the laser. Everybody that I know that has purchased the laser that's properly used it and let people know about it, meaning when they come in saying they have a laser, all have benefited. People go anywhere from two to six months and they pay the laser back and it's pure profit after that. Also, you're seeing more new patients, you're getting better outcome. And the suggestion is to charge accordingly for it because you know if you give something for free, there's not as much value to it. Yeah, I agree, definitely. And especially in the UK, we have specific plans in place, specific programs where you can um, return your um, initial investment really, really quick in you know as little as four to six months as well. Terrific, brilliant. Great. Okay, um, another question. How often do you see your patients? I'm going to assume this is going to vary on the type of condition that you're treating. Um, so, Rosie, maybe if you want to um, answer a question specific about a specific condition, we can maybe delve more into that. And maybe Dr. Silverman can speak generically about the main you know, conditions that you see and how often you do see those patients. So for the acute conditions, we try and see them at least three times a week, of course, at least two to three times a week. The conditions that I use or see most commonly, not limited to this, would be obviously anything in the lower back, sciatica, peripheral neuropathies, any kind of sports injuries like rotator cuff, tennis and golfer's elbow, wrist injuries, carpal tunnel, the quay bonds, any kind of digit injuries, any kind of neck, a lot of different migraines, ankle sprains, both inversion and eversion sprains. A lot of plantar fasciitis, knee injuries, ACL recovery is very big in that life. Then I use it in a functional medicine life in that I use it to help me with the microbiome in the gut. Obviously, vagus nerve stimulation. I do a lot of concussion and neurodegenerative work for broad strokes of what goes on in my office. Okay, perfect. Um, does anybody have any questions about any specific condition protocols that you want to see um, that we can we can talk you through, especially with the violet light? If you do, please please put them in the in the question box or in the chat, and we'll run through them as we've got you know maybe five more minutes. So okay. while you do that. Don't worry. What did you say? Sorry, you did. Um, you muted yourself for a change. Yeah, very good. <laughs> it's not that new word I learned. <laughs> I know. That's, that's an illegal word. So <laughs> let me show you what to do with COVID-19. I'll get stuff off. I'll take her off. She's relaxing. She's had a relaxing day. We've done a couple of webinars. Throughout the world, she's been with a life face down, life face up. I think her nap is over. So if you could just sit there, I'll stand, I'll sit here, and we'll treat her for post COVID, even though she's very fortunate she hasn't had COVID. So one nostril, one nostril. You don't have to open, but open the mouth, boom, and be in there. So one, 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 two, three, four, five. Thymus, thymus, six, apex of the lung, seven and eight, middle of the lung, nine and ten, lower lung, eight, ten, <laughs> eleven and twelve, don't say, don't say, vagus nerve, vagus nerve, thirteen, fourteen, 
sweep the gut 15, and then in the posterior, her posterior would do the lungs, so it would be apex, middle, bilaterally, and lower. The apex, middle, and bilateral, that gives 21 parts. This is great for the long haulers syndrome, and in that long haulers, it's 21 spots, once again. One nose, part of the nose, nose, mouth, tonsillaria, tonsillaria, thymus, lung, lung, middle, middle lung, lower lung, lower lung, vagus nerve, vagus nerve, sweep the gut. The three parts of the posterior lung, 21 parts, 30 to 60 seconds each. You're looking at a 12 to 20 minute treatment for long haulers. Looks like a check. Okay, um, we got another question. How sure. do you treat autism? Or, you know, what, what's the best protocol? Um, autism for the brain, are we talking FX or EVRL? I'll tell you what I like. I like the FX 635. There are some autism studies that are being done. They are ravishingly good. Um, I like to use in the brain as a starting point, 1111. That really stimulates what we call delta waves in the brain, which are quite calming. Um, some of my more standard brain um, frequencies would be 10, 20, 30, 40. I like low numbers in the brain, 20 or less in the brain seems to be most effective from all apparent data. If you could do that and you could do vagus nerve at the same time, which is a great combination of doing the FX635 using the, um, EVRL and the vagus nerve. And then, of course, you want to laser the gut because in autism, 90% of children that had autism also had a gut issue or had leaky gut. Yeah. Thank you. And as well, um, just so you know, especially in the UK, we are putting together a specific nutritional program as well to go alongside the lasers. Um, because we all know that the gut is obviously the second brain in the body. So um, we are formulating that now. And as soon as we're ready to launch that, we will be in touch. Excellent, excellent. Good stuff. Does anyone have any more questions um, for Dr. Silverman or any specific um, conditions that you want us to cover? Or are we, um, are we good? Cool. I think, um, yeah, we're good. So thank you everybody for tuning in this evening. Um, another great webinar, obviously, by Dr. Silverman. And this will be available on demand as well. So you can recap and watch it as well, um, obviously, at a later date. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly. My name is Vanessa. Um, and my email address is vbrown at econia-emea.com. Um, but yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening and um, any more questions, just please feel to feel free to fire them across. I think we've got another webinar scheduled for maybe two or three weeks or something like that. Um, so, yeah, we'll be in touch with the next webinar. But yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening and thank you so much for your time. Bye. Bye, everybody. It's my pleasure. Bye bye.